Despite what the title of this movie suggests, it is not set during the First World War. Instead, it takes place during the Bosnian War of the 1990s, and aside from its setting, none of the events you see in the film really took place. It is actually something more of a parable, a very simple story that authentically illustrates just how completely insane that whole conflict was. So the movie begins with the Bosnian relief squad heading for the front lines, but they get lost when a thick blanket of fog rolls in. Unable to see more than 10 feet in front of them, they decide to call it a night and push on at daybreak, when hopefully the fog will have cleared by then. By the time the morning sun creeps over the horizon, the fog is lifted, but then the Bosnian relief squad realise that they have made a fatal blunder during their night's march. Instead of reaching friendly lines, they have stumbled upon their enemy, the Serbians, who in quick fashion almost wipe out the entire squad. Seemingly the only survivor of this is a Bosnian called Chiki, who has taken shelter in an abandoned trench and is now stuck between the Serbian and Bosnian front lines, effectively making this no man's land, hence the title of the movie. The Serbs decide to send a couple of their guys to confirm their kills. The older one seems to be a battle-hardened veteran, and the other is a rookie called Nino. Together they head to the middle trench to look for survivors, but Chiki is able to hide in a nearby storage room. Thinking that they're safe, the veteran decides to show Nino what he likes to do with Bosnian corpses. Setting one at their feet, he booby traps it with a bouncing mine. Knowing that if other Bosnians return to the trench and recover their fallen comrade, the weight lifted from the mine will set it off and explode in their faces. Not liking this one bit, Chiki comes out spraying, killing the veteran Serb, but only wounding Nino. Instead of finishing the job, Chiki decides to spare Nino and use him to try and signal for help. As the two wait for help, they are shocked to discover that the dead Bosnian is very much alive. And it's from this point on that the film really kicks off. Chiki refuses to abandon his trapped friend Sarah, and he also can't afford to let Nino go because he knows that the moment he does, both he and his friend are at the mercy of the Serbs. That's not even mentioned the possibility that they could all blow up at any moment. So very quickly things escalate, and it's not long before a local squad from the United Nations Protection Force gets involved when they hear about people trapped in no man's land. But the thing is, they're not sure if the trapped people are civilians or military, which further complicates things, because the United Nations official peacekeeping mission was to give humanitarian aid, to oversee a ceasefire between all Balkan forces, and yet remain neutral in the conflict. They weren't allowed to get involved or pick a side, despite what their troops were seeing on the ground. They were only allowed to use their guns if they were fired upon. Now, if these mission parameters sound at all vague or limiting, then you can get a fair idea of just how useless the UN was in Bosnia. Yes, sir, but since it is the first time that the two camps... Yes, but Captain, you know perfectly well that there's nothing that I can do without the approval of the General Assembly of the United Nations. I don't think the General Assembly of the United Nations is going to convene itself specifically in order to deal with the problems of two unknown individuals trapped in no man's land. I'm afraid there's nothing I can do. I just don't have the authority, you see. So what should I tell them, Colonel, sir? Tell them that, as usual, neither side can agree. Tell them anything you like, Captain. Goodbye. Anyway, like I was saying, a UN squad hears about the trapped people and they want to go help because they're frustrated about their roles as mere bystanders. So in an APC, the squad drives to the middle trench and they meet Chiki, Nino and Sarah. But within less than five minutes of their arrival, the commanding officer calls them up on the radio and orders them to pull out. Frustrated, the squad obeys and leaves, until they come across a cable news reporter who has heard the entire conversation over the radio and demands to know what is going to be done about the trapped men. And the rest of the movie is pretty much about this media circus, with the UN before trying to not lose face with the whole world watching, but also not get involved, and the entire time you're left wondering if Chiki, Nino and Sarah are going to make it out of this alive. It's a very absurd, ludicrous situation, but it is a perfect parable for how the Bosnian War was handled by the UN. And despite its serious and dark subject matter, the movie is also pretty funny. We, we came for, uh, for people. Yes. People, you know? Yes. People? Okay. Yes. People between lines. Yes, yes. Yes? Okay. 
Where are they? Yes, yes, yes. OK, d'accord. You... you understand nothing, je parie. Yes. <coughs> you speak English? English? No. Uh, Français? <laughs> right. We are here for people between lines. People. Je te cache. Je un point, je un mot, yes, yes. My absolute favorite bits are with Chiki and Nino, as they're both bitter enemies in a tragic war, and yet they have to talk to each other during this entire ordeal. Pa normalno da smo htjeli da se odvajamo kad ste vi počeli rat. Pa vi ste počeli rat, vi ste htjeli da se odvajamo. Pa, pa vi ste, vi ste, pa vi ste, vi ste počeli, počeli. Vi ste počeli rat. Ko je počeo rat? Ko je počeo rat? Mi smo počeli rat. Vi ste počeli rat. To avoid further spoilers, I don't want to say anything else. Just know that this is a film that will make you laugh, it will grab your attention, and it will also piss you off. It is absolutely fantastic and well deserving of his Oscar that it won back in 2002, the first time that a Bosnian film had ever done so. And now I would like to recommend it to my fellow history buffs. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and until next time, take care guys.